my lord honorable sri sachit chandra sharma ji the honorable judges the additional advocate general the public prosecutor the assistant solicitor general the chairman bar council the president high court advocates association the registrars the director judicial academy the secretary telangana state legal services authority the law officers and other officers law secretary madam meetha sharma siddharth sharma and shantanu sharma and other family members of the honorable sri justice satish chandra sharma respected senior members of the bar and junior advocate friends the bar has assembled before the full court to bid farewell to his lordship sri justice satish chandra sharma honorable the chief justice of high court for the state of telangana and his lordship is transferred as the chief justice of high court of delhi on knowing about the news of appointment of my lord satish chandra sharma as the chief justice of the telangana high court a search on google returned a smiling picture of my lords that smile has been the mark of my lords right from the day my lords assumed charge as the chief justice of this honorable court it defines the personality of my lords a kind person with simple demeanor and congenial attitude during my lords tenure as the chief justice of the telangana high court we have never had any occasion where my lords tone had an element of hardness my lords has been very pleasant to the members of the bar and it is a painful feeling today to bid farewell to a person who embodies in himself down to earth qualities coupled with the all elements of grace today we have a very mixed feeling of missing my lords from the bench of this honorable court and at the same time a joy and happiness that my lords will be adoring the seat of delhi high court an auspicious sign for a future role at the apex court born in a family of academicians my lords kept high the reputation of his parents dr b n sharma who served as a professor at jabalpur university and as the vice chancellor of barkatulla university and mother srimati shanti sharma who served as a principal in maharani lakshmi bai higher secondary school my lords brilliant academic record and outstanding acumen is evident from my lords securing a distinction in graduation national merit scholarship for post graduate studies three university gold medals and topping the class while studying law after obtaining the law degree my lords enrolled as an advocate and practiced in the madhya pradesh high court my lords dealt with varied cases pertaining to constitutional law civil criminal and service law recognizing my lords brilliant acumen at the young age of 42 my lords was designated as a senior advocate of madhya pradesh high court in the year 2003 it did not take long for my lords to receive a call to adorn the bench of the madhya pradesh high court and my lords was elevated as an additional judge of the madhya pradesh high court on 18th january 2008 my lords was appointed as a permanent judge on 15th january 2010 my lords southern sojourn started with the karnataka high court in the year 2020 when my lords was appointed as a judge of karnataka high court subsequently my lords was appointed as the acting chief justice of karnataka high court on 31st of august 2001 2021 we are very fortunate that my lords was appointed as the chief justice of the telangana high court on 9th of october 2021 and my lords assumed charge as the chief justice of our high court on 11 10 immediately upon taking charge as the chief justice my lords worked towards cutting down the pendency list of our high court and towards its towards this objective necessary instructions were issued to the registry to identify cases batch wise and to list all such cases in batches so that the same can be disposed the initiative proved to be a marvelous stroke to mitigate the pendency of cases in our high court numerous cases were listed before my lords bench batch wise and all such cases were heard and disposed of duly adverting to the merits i am privy to many such batch of cases and can vouch for the fact that in the zeal to dispose of the case my lords never left any counsel unheard before the cases were decided 
More so, every case was disposed of after due discussion of the legal merits of the matter. The voracious reader, which my lord sees, it was easy to decipher that my lord spent many hours burning the midnight oil trying to understand the legal issues involved in all the cases listed before my lord every day. The command and the facts and the law my lords had was evident during the hearing of those cases. What makes my lord's judgment so unique is the style of writing them. A simple and effective narration of the facts and the application of the law, discussing the rationale, have been hallmarks of judgments of my lords. However complicated the facts, by application of the relevant provision of the law, my lords made many cases look simple in their disposal. Most of such cases have been carried in the appeal to the Supreme Court. But the majority of the cases have not been interfered with. I am informed that my lords during his tenure as the Chief Justice of this court has disposed of about 3,500 cases, which in itself is an achievement of the highest standard. When the system is plagued with pendency of cases and is often accused of delays, endeavors of the kind undertaken by my lords stand out. It is my duty to place before this full court some of the judgments rendered by my lords, which are a reflection of my lord's outstanding legal acumen. In T. Yakaya versus State of Telangana and others reported in Manu, TL 0729, 2022, a writ petition was filed by a retired assistant registrar of this Honorable High Court seeking the implementation of a GO which granted a special pay, namely the Telangana increment with effect from the date on which it was extended to all the employees of the state as against from 1-1-2019, the date on which the High Court for the State of Telangana came into existence. My Lords observed that the employees serving in the district courts, though are governed by different set of rules, are certainly part of the judicial system and the judicial officers are also part of the judiciary which is serving the State of Telangana. Rejecting the contention that the employees of the High Court cannot be equated with the employees of the district courts and the judicial officers, my lords held the same to be discriminatory, arbitrary and violative of Articles 14 and 21 of the Constitution of India. In District Collector Khammam and others versus Madam Hanumanthrao and others, this judgment is a mark of the effectiveness and brilliance of my lords approach in disposing of long-standing matters. My lords, by promptly and meticulously hearing the matter, ensured much awaited justice was done to the farmers before my lords who lost their land in the year 1963. My lords, as part of the bench, was adjudicating an appeal, preferred against an order directing the state government to provide the petitioners with alternative land or compensation for the loss of the petitioner's land, which was submerged when a tank was constructed in the village. My lords refused to accept the primary contention of the appellate that the writ petition ought to have been dismissed on the ground of delay and latches as it was filed in the year 1993, whereas the alleged cause of action arose in the year 1965-66. My lords writing for the bench drew strength from the Supreme Court judgment rendered in Vidya Devi versus the State of Himachal Pradesh, 2022 SCC 569, wherein it was held that Condonation of the delay is a matter of judicial discretion, which must be exercised judiciously and reasonably in the facts and circumstances of a case. It will depend upon the breach of the fundamental rights and the remedy claimed and when the, how the delay arose. There is no period of limitation prescribed for the courts to exercise their constitutional jurisdiction to do substantial justice. Consequently, my laws dismiss the appeal upholding the constitutional rights of the petitioners. In Fisherman Cooperative Society, Bakshi, Begampet and others was the state of Telangana. A judgment rendered in writ appeal number 344 of 2021 and batch. An appeal was preferred against an order whereby a learned single judge of the Honorable High Court upheld the validity of a GO which modified the viability norms for membership to facilitate admission of more members into the Fisherman Cooperative Societies in the state and thereby to extend the benefits to a greater number of fishermen. My Lords, as a part of the bench, after careful consideration of the documents on the record, 
concluded that the impugned jeevo was an attempt to include as many fishermen as possible my lord's writing for the bench observed that a policy decision taken by the government is not liable to be interfered with unless the court is satisfied that the rule making authority has acted arbitrarily or in violation of fundamental rights guaranteed under articles 14 and 16 of the constitution of india the appeals were accordingly dismissed in cyber city computers versus others versus state of telangana and others reported in 2022 the retrospective effect given to the amendment to rule 52 of the telangana protection of depositors of financial establishment rules 1999 was challenged it was the, it was contended by the petitioner that the act empowered the government to designate competent authority to launch prosecution under the act and accordingly the government had designated the district magistrates and commissioners of police hyderabad visakhapatnam and vijayawada as competent authority by giving retrospective effect to the impugned amendment which declares that all the investigations launched under the act shall be deemed to be launched by the competent authority or an inspector not below the rank of inspector of police the rights of the petitioner are, be, are being infringed rejecting the contentions of the petitioner my lords writing for the bench discussed at length various principles of interpretation of statutes my lords held that it, it is well settled proposition of law that a litigant has no vested right in the matter of procedural laws or alteration in procedural laws which generally are held to be retrospective in the sense that they apply to future as well as to pending actions my lords observed that the intention of the legislature by amending rules with retrospective effect no way intends to regularize any flaw in respect of the trial the act of the petitioner was certainly an offence earlier also and it is an offence under the amendment also and it is nobody's case that the act committed by the petition has been made an offence by amending act retrospectively accordingly my lords as part of the bench appeal the impugned amendment in president health care reforms doctors association and others was a special chief secretary health medical and family welfare department and others the matter pertained to a geo by which fees was fixed in respect of students admitted into professional post graduate medical and dental courses in the state of telangana united non minority medical and dental professional institutions in the state for the academic year 2017-18 contrary to the recommendations made by the fee regulatory committee my lords writing for the bench discussed at length the law laid down by the apex court in the cases of islamic academic of academic of education and another for the state of karnataka and others 2036 scc 690 and pa inamdar and others was a state of maharashtra and others year 2003 sc 3724 my lords relying on the recent supreme court judgment rendered in vasavi engineering college parents association versus state of telangana and others 2019 7th scc 172 held that once the frc was constituted by the state government and the fee fixed by the frc the state government has certainly transgressed its jurisdiction by fixing fee the impugned jeevo fixing fees was accordingly struck down on behalf of the state i thank my lords for the immense concern of my lords in protecting the lands of the government against frivolous vexatious and mischievous land litigation engineered by unscrupulous elements the state being the custodian of the lands is faced with innumerable cases arising on the basis of concocted documents and doubtful claims all such cases have been chucked out and huge extents of lands have been saved thanks to my lords outstanding acumen in differentiating a genuine claim from an absolutely false one thereby protecting the larger public interest at the same time my lords has also been very kind to people who have lost lands on account of acquisition and has ensured that they have been adequately compensated such a balanced approach has endeared my lords to every member of the bar and also to the people of the state of telangana my lords has a very kind heart his concern for the poor downtrodden and the vulnerable assumes primary consideration 
even while dealing with the cases on the bench. My lords accorded great importance to the rights of the lowest strata of the society. From directing surprise inspection of the conditions in schools for blind children to ensuring compensation was promptly paid to the kin of a deceased sanitation worker. My lords left no stone unturned in protecting the rights of the vulnerable members of the society. The sufferance of the poor was never tolerated by my lords and my lords stood tall in protecting their rights and to this effect took, the, took to task any authority who may have contributed to such violation of their rights. My lords has always acted with a strong sense of duty in himself and ensured appreciation in accordance appreciation is accorded where my lords deemed it his due, especially to those who are not often recognized. It was no ordinary sight to behold when in a truly heartwarming gesture, my lord stopped on his way to the court to personally present a bouquet to a home guard who was silently being watched by my lords daily en route to the court. And the impression upon my lords by the dedication with which he attended to his duties. My lords always endear to everyone who interacted with my lords and has been ever receptive to the issues concerning the bar, staff of the court, and anybody who knocked the doors of this honorable court. The weaker sections of the society have a special place in my lord's heart. My lord's contribution towards uh, the amelioration of their conditions is immense. There are many instances which reflect my lord's genuine concern towards them. What is due to them was ensured without any delay. Out of the innumerable instances, I was privy to a particular instance where my lord's being the chancellor of the Nalsar University ensured that the percentile of reservation to the weaker section is immediately implemented in spite of a request to implement it in stages owing to certain circumstances. The benevolent quality has created difference in the confidence levels of the students who are sometimes branded as not up to the mark in certain institutions of higher learning in the country. Another aspect which is commendable and needs to be appreciated is the speed at which my lords take an action, be it the disposal of the cases, administrative decisions or any other decision. My Lord's razor sharp thinking does not allow any delay concerning any issue, be it judicial or otherwise. And we are fortunate that this court has had the privilege of being privy to all the endeavors of my Lord's aim at improvement of the judicial system as a whole. We will surely miss that smile of my Lord's and hope that my Lord's tenure at the Delhi High Court will be pleasant and a step in furtherance of a bigger role at the Apex Court. I and on behalf of all of my colleagues, wish him and his family good health and pray the Almighty to bestow strength and success in all the endeavors that his lordships may undertake in future. Thank you, my lords. Honorable Mr. Justice Satish Chandra Sharma. Chief Justice of the High Court for the State of Telangana, my esteemed colleagues on the bench, Madam Meeta Sharma, Mr. B. S. Prasad, Learned Advocate General for the State of Telangana, Mr. T. Surya Karan Reddy, Learned Additional Solicitor General of India, Mr. B. Narsimha Reddy, Chairman, Bar Council of Telangana, Mr. Puna Mashor Gaur, President, Telangana High Court Advocates Association, Senior Advocates, Distinguished Members of the Bar, Members of the Registry led by the Registrar General, MSK Sujana, MSC Tirumala Devi, Director of Judicial Academy, Mr. Govardhan Reddy, Member Secretary, Telangana State Legal Services Authority, Ladies and Gentlemen. Today, we have assembled here to bid farewell to our beloved Chief Justice Satish Chandra Sharma on his transfer as Chief Justice of Delhi High Court. Before I joined this High Court as a Puiti Judge on 22-10-2021, Justice Sharma had already joined 
this prestigious High Court as Chief Justice on 11 10 2021. Of course, I knew Justice Sharma from much before, but our association has become very close since we both came to this High Court. As has been stated by the Learned Advocate General, Justice Sharma was born on 30th November 1961 at Bhopal in the state of Madhya Pradesh to a family of teachers. His father, Sri Dr. B. N. Sharma, was a renowned professor who later on became Vice Chancellor of Barkatullah University, Bhopal. His mother, Srimati Shanti Sharma, was also a teacher and was the principal of Maharani Lakshmi Bai Higher Secondary School. Before retirement, she also worked as District Education Officer at Jabal. Born in such an environment and amongst such educated people, Justice Sharma naturally has a very refined mind which is reflected in his personality. Justice Sharma had a very successful professional life as a lawyer and at a comparatively young age of 42, he was designated as a senior advocate by the High Court of Madhya Pradesh in the year 2003. His talent was immediately noticed and he was elevated to the bench on 18-1-2008. He continued as a judge of the Madhya Pradesh High Court, mostly in the Indore bench, and thereafter he was transferred to the Karnataka High Court. After a brief stint at Karnataka High Court, where he also served as Acting Chief Justice, Justice Sharma took oath as Chief Justice of this High Court on 11-10-2021. It is often said that looks are deceptive. Justice Sharma comes across as a very jovial person, but that is only one side of his personality. He is a very serious judge who is deeply concerned with and committed to the judicial system. When it comes to justice, he has shown exemplary commitment. He is concerned for the ground rule and their access to justice. I can only refer to one incident which I am personally aware of. After I had joined this High Court, I came across a newspaper report about the death of two persons who worked as manual scavengers, though manual scavenging is prohibited. They died while working as such in a society of private apartments. I wrote a letter highlighting this aspect and my Chief Justice, showing exemplary concern, immediately registered the same as a suo moto repetition and issued notice to the government. He ensured that not only the family members of the two deceased manual scavengers were paid compensation, compassionate appointments were also offered to the legal aides. When he found that the terms of appointment were not respectable, he took a very strong stand and ensured that the authority deleted such conditions. This is only one small incident, but it speaks volumes of the conviction and commitment of Justice Sharma to the cause of justice. My reference would be incomplete if I do not refer to Madam Mita Sharma, the better half of Justice Sharma, whom I fondly call as Babiji. Madam Sharma is not only a very gracious lady, but at the same time, she is also a very expressive lady. She is not only a PhD in biotechnology, but she also expresses herself through her innumerable paintings which adorn the house of the Chief Justice. The family is blessed with two sons, one of whom is already an advocate. I, on behalf of myself and on, my, on behalf of my colleagues on the bench, the entire High Court establishment and the Judicial Fraternity of the State of Telangana convey our deepest regards and best wishes to Justice Sharma and his family members on their onward journey. We pray to the Almighty to give Justice Sharma and his family members good health and happiness and to take him to further heights of glory. Thank you.
my steam system that the judges distinguished former judges who are present learned advocate general learned public prosecutors learned assistant solicitor general learned senior advocates learned advocates law secretary resta the other office of this high court telangana state legal service authority telangana state judicial academy staff staff of the high court and those institutions advocate clerks reverend elders and other respectable fellow ladies and gentlemen now under the name to one and all i am grateful to my brother just as ujjal bhai the chief justice designate and the learned advocate general for the kind words spoken by him and thankful to all those persons present for the overwhelming response to this farewell function one has to say good bye with great difficulty especially when one has to leave the people who gave love affection and respect however it has become inevitable i am grateful to the honorable members of the collegium for initially appointing me as chief justice of high court for the state of telangana and i am again grateful to the honorable members of the collegium for transferring me to the high court of delhi transfer to another high court would certainly give me an opportunity to take up the challenges of another important state and to get the experience of capital state of a nation i took oath as chief justice of the high court for the state of telangana on 11th of october 2021 in spite of the fact that pandemic was in its last stage the high court never stopped and continued to work with physical hearing started from 15th of october 2021 By the grace of God, I had the privilege to be a part of oath giving ceremony for seven new judges on 15th of October 2021, and also other ten new judges on 24th of April 2022. Thus, making the strength of the judges of Telangana High Court to 29 out of 42. I am glad to mention that this High Court is the third court in the country having maximum lady judges. I am grateful to my learned sister and brother judges for the constant support and cooperation in disposal of cases. My sister and brother judges are totally focusing on delivering speedy justice to the litigants. At this juncture, I take this opportunity to thank all my sister and brother judges in making the state judicial officers conference a grand success by eliminating many thought-provoking issues to the judicial officers of the state. In the state of Telangana, we are handicapped on account of lack of infrastructure, but we made our sincere efforts to ensure that judicial complexes are provided by the state in all districts. I am indebted to my colleagues for their guidance in different committees. In the committee meetings, they brought their experience and knowledge about the peculiarity of the state. I would also like to recall my appreciation for the colleagues who sat with me as partners in the division bench. the legal acumen their insights into complex legal issues ensure a real justice of our people the learned members of the bar have equally contributed to endeavors i am proud of the bar which is very courteous and disciplined a bar which is illuminated by senior advocates and is well stocked with the young and dynamic lawyers i have seen lot of potential in the bar I was also a senior advocate before becoming a judge, and therefore, my sincere request to the seniors of the bar is to guide the youngsters. When I joined the profession, the concept was to be with a senior who used to teach us the basics. Now things have changed. The law schools train the students so well that they can start arguing from day one as an advocate, and they are certainly doing well. But personally. I feel that young lawyers should always seek guidance from the senior members of the bar, as certain basic values are taught only by the seniors. We must, however, remember that there are no shortcuts to hard work. An advocate must be inquisitive like a detective, tenacious like a farmer, and precise like a surgeon. In the legal fraternity, we must walk the past as enshrined by the Constitution of India. To leave the constitutional path. 
is to venture into lawlessness and to enter into the general raj. Our foremost duty is to strengthen the weak against the strong and to protect the small fish from the larger ones. In te integrity is the hallmark of judicial discipline apart from others. We have to protect and promote the rule of law and democracy. We survive and prosper as a nation if we concretize the dreams of the constitution of India. Otherwise, we too will totter and fall like house of cards. I take this opportunity to thank the government in converting 38 fast track codes into regular codes along with supporting staff. We need to increase the number of codes in the district judiciary and to provide better accommodation for judicial officer staff members. We restrict the central nervous system of judiciary it is a lifeline of system. Without an efficient registry, the bar and bench are happy helpless. Here I would like to bring to your kind notice that we could achieve in getting 779 additional posts sanctioned by the government. I am thankful to the former registrar general, now judge of the High Court, Justice Dr. Nagarjun, and the present registrar general, Srimati K. Sulna, and her team in providing constant support system. And without their hard work, smooth running of the High Court was impossible. I would like to thank each member of the registry for their commendable work. Like the frontline warrior, the members of the registry ensured that the High Court was functional during the last stages of the pandemic. In the Buddhist pantheon, there are Bodhi Sattvas. They are unseen people who are capable of reaching Bhumbhavod, but they chose the path to lessen the pain and agony of the people. My office and my court staff are full of such Bodhi Sattvas. I have been able to discharge my judicial and my administrative work only because of them. I would like to record my gratitude to Mr. Ali Mohammad Sattvas, Principal Secretary, Mr. T. Nagesh Babu, Principal Private Secretary, Mr. P. L. Narsimha Rao, Private Secretary, Mr. G. Buchaya Shastri, Personal Secretary. There is a long list of my court chamber and resident staff, and I am not mentioning the names individually, but I am indebted to them for their hard work and efficiency. I am thankful to my court staff, especially the court masters who work round the clock to ensure that the judgments dictated are delivered in time. They are very courteous and polite and never said no to any kind of task given to them. I am also thankful to the court officers for the cooperation extended to me during my tenure as Chief Justice. Moving in and out, taking care of visitors and guests, the protocol staff headed by Mr. T. Venkateshwar Rao S. Star Protocol and Mr. Sriman Narayan has always been of much help. I am thankful to them for their tireless service even at oldest hours. I am grateful to the security personnel of various clients who work around, around the clock even during the odd hours to ensure my safety and security, especially Mr. Prabhakar Rao and Mr. Sanjay Kumar. I am grateful to the medical staff who are present in case of medical crisis and they made all possible efforts to ensure that, mess, that best medical assistance is provided to me and to my family members. Lastly, last but certainly the first and the foremost important individual is my wife, Neeta. Like an eternal partner, she has always stood by me all through my life. Always patient, always smiling, always encouraging. She has tolerated all my temperaments and faults. I would like to add that she is more educated than me, more qualified than me, and then also she has sacrificed her career for the family. I am sure without her, I would not be sitting here. here. My two sons, Mr. Siddharth Sharma and Shantanu Sharma, both are advocates and admire me in all their endeavors. Their phenomenal knowledge, endless conversations, numerous talents keep me enthralled. The children are certainly their sex. As I leave the portals of the historic high court, my only regret is that there are many unfinished projects which I leave behind me and I hand over all those unfinished projects to my brother and sister and the leader, Mr. Fujal Gami. With the blessings of my Lord, the Honorable Chief Justice of India and Ramana, we started the International Arbitration and Mediation Center in Hyderabad 
which is coming up very well. And even we have laid the foundation stone for its own premises and construction was going to start. For the other projects relating to construction of court complexes, administrative sanction has been adopted. Before I conclude, I am grateful to my father, who is no more, as well as my mother, who always taught me to follow the path of dharma. Justice P. Kovanda Ramaya, in his book titled as The Light of Ramayana, has defined dharma. Quote, what is dharma? Dharma is that which sustains the world and directs the world on correct lines. Dharma is duty. It exhorts man to do his duty. The practice of dharma gives both prosperity and bliss. Dharma is manifold. Truth is the lifeblood of any dharma. Hence it is said that dharmas are different facets of truth. Sage Vedvyas said, Maryadam Shito Dharma. Keeping oneself within bounds in dharma. Samaskavasya Lakshanam, self-control is the essence. There is in short, all of us have to follow the path of dharma, then only we will be able to do, to just, to do justice in the society. I once again thank you all for the love and affection given to me during my stay in Hyderabad. I am not leaving Hyderabad forever. I will keep on visiting Hyderabad and will be in touch with you again and again. Thank you all once again. Jai. Thank <laughs> you.